What's up, students? Hey, so this is a sort of um, uh, a video I'm going to talk about uh, some recommended stuff that you do. Uh, this is for OPS 435. Uh, what is that? This is a course where we're going to be learning a lot of Python. Um, we're going to be using Python to learn how to basically um, automate a lot of sort of system administrative tasks. And so what you'll see off on the wiki is that um, the instructions are written in a way where you can follow along, you can do everything on Matrix. Matrix is our server. You need the VPN to access it. You should all by now be understanding how to get onto Matrix. Uh, so that is going to be a requirement. You do need Matrix regardless of whatever else you're doing. You're going to need to set that up uh, to be able to complete labs eight and nine anyway. However, um, I have some issues with Matrix because when we are on Matrix, uh, we're basically forced to use uh, Vim. And Vim is a great tool for editing text files. But a lot of times when we're getting started off uh, with programming things, we're going to want some more... Um, sophisticated tools in order to learn Python for the first time. So this is a uh, recommended approach that you take uh, for getting things done. Basically to get the Python scripts completed, you're going to need a Linux machine with Python installed. That's all you need. Um, Matrix is that. So you could do everything on Matrix and be done with the course and that's fine. Um, but if you want to be using uh, more sophisticated tools, uh, such as the one I'm going to show you now, which is VS Code, uh, we are going to have to create our own Linux virtual machine. Um, so I'm going to walk you through some steps basically to uh, complete this uh, using Fedora Workstation. I'm going to assume that you have all created virtual machines in the past, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. Um, so I'll go over here. Uh, I do a quick search for Fedora Workstation. Fedora Workstation is very similar to CentOS, which you've probably used in the past, um, but this will not have any issues in terms of getting VS Code installed. Visual Studio Code is uh, another sort of text editor with some bells and whistles that we want to use. Uh, so what I did is I went over to Fedora Workstation um, Fedora Workstation over here. Uh, for most of you, 99% of, of you are probably going to be on x86-64. I'm not going to worry about the beta. I'm just going to click on this link over here to download it. Um, so I've actually already done that. I've got Fedora Workstation Live set up right here already. So um, next thing I'm going to do is I can put away my browser. Um, I am just going to use something like Virtual Machine Manager. Um, and I'm going to walk through the steps of setting up a new VM um, with that ISO file that I have created. So I'm going to say a new virtual machine over here. Um, so for this, again, we don't really care. Um, any Linux operating system is probably going to be fine. Just make sure you, that you've got the right one, okay? So I'm going to go and browse to downloads and I will find the right place. Here we go. So Fedora Workstation over here. Um, it's automatically detecting Fedora. That's fine. And so this stuff really doesn't matter too much. Um, we are not doing anything like really, really heavy. Uh, but I'm just going to boost this up to something like 4 gigs and 4 CPUs. Uh, this is really entirely dependent on your machine and how much extra horsepower you have to work with. So might as well just set something like that. 20 gigs is plenty. Uh, I will call this my OPS 435VM, something like that. Uh, I don't think I have to customize configuration, but if this doesn't work, then I will definitely have to uh, fix it. All right, let's start it. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, 
So I'll probably fast forward through a lot of this um, just because we've already done this uh, many times in previous courses. I'll go and install this. Uh, I'm going to try and um, accept as many defaults as I can. Um, automatic partitioning, I would like, yes, automatic as much as I can. There we go, fine, fine, fine. Uh, you'll notice this is this looks a lot like um, this looks a lot like setting up setting up a CentOS, and I'll just set that to Toronto keyboard. Yep, yeah, good. Okay, so if everything's gone according to plan, you should see something like this. We'll start up a setup. Um, I'm just going to turn most of these things off again. Uh, third-party repositories we will allow that because I believe we'll need it for the next thing I'm gonna skip any of that stuff um, you can go ahead and create a user uh, one thing that you may want to make sure that you're doing is setting your username to be the same one as you use uh, for your my Seneca account okay um, password this is really up to you we are not going to be using this VM for anything uh, too secure, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, this is just a place where we can install VS Code. And so I don't need the tour. Let's just make this larger. Okay, so I think one of the first things that we will do here is make sure that we can uh, use the terminal. And uh, I'll just go ahead and change this so that I am scaling my display. Oh, didn't do it. There we go. That's better. Okay. So um, one thing that I will do is make sure that we have Python installed. Uh, so I'm going to use Python version over here. We have uh, installed Python 3.10.0. That's great. That's perfect. That's what we want. Uh, so the thing to look out for here is that we are using a version of Python that is Python 3 and uh, something above 3.6, although I'm not sure if even that's really required. Um, anyway, so 3.10 is perfectly fine. Uh, last step is to be getting Visual Studio Code installed on this machine. Um, so VS Code is another text editor that we can use. It has some advantages over just using Vim, which is why we're going through all this trouble to get a VM running and everything like that. Okay, so um, the reason it's so good is when we're just starting off, we want to have a lot of programming tools. Uh, we want to have things such as a pretty nice debugger. Uh, we want to have syntax highlighting and things like that. And it's just much easier to do it with a sort of more modern text editor than Vim. I've done it with Vim. Um, Vim is fine. It's great, but uh, dealing with plugins and stuff like that is not trivial. Okay, so I'm going to be searching here. I'm going to search for Visual Studio Code Fedora because we can't just sort of go and download um, the thing that we want to do. So we actually want to add a repo and then do um, install this through the repo. Okay, so um, I am finding the VS Visual Studio Code docs here, Visual Studio Code on Linux. I'm gonna scroll down to find Fedora over here. This won't work if you're just using the Ubuntu stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna go and copy this and I will throw it into my terminal. Okay, so. Uh, when I want to paste things into terminal, if you haven't learned it already, here it is, control, shift, and V, okay? And I'll hit enter. I'm going to go enter my sudo password, okay? So we got that done. Now we will follow the rest of the steps over here. So DNF, check update, sudo DNF, install code. Let's go ahead and do that. Go back over here sudo dnf check update okay you may find that there's a, a lot of other things and other updates that we uh, 
we needed to install depending on what sort of version of Fedora you've installed. I have installed not the beta, but uh, you know the most recent, so we'll see. Okay, so um, I ran the DNF check update and a lot of stuff happened over here. So I think we refreshed everything, but you should be able to see uh, that Visual Studio Code is one of the repositories that we're now checking uh, for updated software. That doesn't mean that we've installed VS Code yet. It means we have one more thing to do, sudo dnf install code. Okay. And I'm gonna say yes to this. So now we are downloading Visual Studio Code. Once we've done that, there's a couple more things that we want to do. But essentially, um, if we've if we've set up a Linux environment, we can go through the same steps as we have uh, for the lab, which is just basically, you know, creating directories uh, for each of the labs and then beginning to create our uh, script files. And then you can download the check script onto your machine over here. Uh, just to check everything and then submit uh, exactly the same way as what you would before. But instead of being limited to only using Vim, um, you will now have VS Code to help you out. Okay, so that is complete. We should be able to go into activities over here and we should be able to find VS Code uh, right here. Okay, so running VS Code for the first time, we can go and select uh, our dark mode. Um, there's a couple more things that we probably want to do just before we say that we're complete over here. Um, so we have extensions in the left corner, right? Uh, you can press Control Shift X, I believe that was. And one of the first things that you see here in the drop down, popular, is the Python. Um, this Python extension. Okay, so we'll go ahead and install the Python extension over here. The only, the other thing that you might see is sort of PyLance, which seems to be the sort of more current version of this Python extension. The Python extension is going to give us stuff like debugging and linting and stuff like that, which is basically the bells and whistles that we want um, to have when we are creating uh, Python scripts for the first time. Okay, we are done. Uh, so just to make sure everything's working, let's go ahead and create a new file. Um, select the language to get started. I am going to select, I should be able to select Python. There we go, Python at the very end. Okay. So now I should be able to get started creating scripts. So I'll just do something basic like print hello world. And once I'm done with that, I'll go and save this file. Uh, I'm gonna wanna name this as something like, um, let's create a new OPS 435 folder. And I will create a lab one folder. And then I am going to name this lab one a.py. This is probably not actually what they want for lab one.py, but we'll go ahead and just do this anyway. Okay, so I've created this. I can make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> Much bigger. Uh, so now let's just make sure that the debugger is working. So I've gone to run and debug over here. I will click on the run and debug. I'm going to select Python file over here. And there we go. Okay, so everything's working. We have a debugger now. I'm going to be demonstrating why this is useful in class and stuff like that. Uh, feel free to go and search for some of the other extensions. Um, if you really like Vim key bindings, you you may wish to install this. You don't have to, um, but that should cover it for now. So we should be in good shape to proceed with lab number one. I hope this was useful. Talk to you soon.